Okay, my name is Ross Lovegrove. I'm a designer, industrial designer, uh, with a bit of a philosophy associated. And I live and work in London. Well, I've always thought that buses should not be a bus. They should, they, in scale, they relate more to architecture. So a bus should be, since a bus is slow, and it doesn't really need to be aerodynamic, it could be a piece of architecture. I could imagine it uh, as a sort of beautiful, smooth skin, soft-edged aluminium box in some way, where even the wheels were not would be not visible. I was just in Cairo, and they have vehicles there which have skirts which come down and hide the wheels. And it's a very different perception of a vehicle that feels, it seems to move in a much more uh, elegant way when you don't see the wheels. So I think since buses have a given trajectory, they go on the same route every day, that they could be a piece of mobile architecture. So when they stop, it, you, you see it a completely different way. You know, I've always thought that sustainability should be made fashionable. Uh, we need trends, but the right kind of trends, you know. Sustainability is, you know, it's, a, it's, it's one of these words that's becoming worn out already, you know. I mean, relationships need to be sustainable before anything else is sustainable. So there's big issues related to that. Sustainable might be, mean longevity. If you, if you buy something you love uh, and you hang on to it, then, you know, like these sunglasses. I like these sunglasses. So if I sit on them or, the, or a screw falls out, I get really angry because there's no need to replace anything uh, if you buy wisely. Uh, well, that's not true of, of technology like electronics. That's why I don't design cell phones, because by the time I finish the design, it's already dead. So I'm, I'm interested in endurance, ironically. I'm not interested in disposable popular culture. Look at, look at my solar tree for Artemide. When my solar tree was shown outside the MAC in, in Vienna, I, somebody said to me, how on earth can you justify putting something as, as beautiful as that, if you don't mind me saying, outside on the street. What about vandalism? And my reply was two, two ways. One is, if the only thing that's beautiful that's on the street is a car, then it's pretty sad for society, okay? Looking across the road at a Mercedes that was e easily twice the price of my solar tree. The second thing is, if we treat everybody like a vandal so that we don't give them comfortable furniture outside, place to sit or sleep or read a newspaper in a comfortable way. If everything outside has to be steel or concrete because we're worried about destruction, then the world's going nowhere. We need to bring the inside outside. And, and to do that, we, we, if we do that rather, we will uh, create a much more sort of trusting and exchangeable uh, social network. It's about interaction, isn't it? You know, I was just up in Copenhagen and there was a really great vibe. This was uh, last week. And uh, there was a great vibe because they'd just gone through the winter when they have 16 or 18 hours of darkness and everybody pops out. It's the same in Sweden, of course, to some extent. Mm -hmm. uh, and everybody's on their bicycle. And I was getting up early at 6 o'clock in the morning uh, just to go and watch people on their bicycles because I just thought it was the most beautiful thing I've ever seen. I, I thought that the people look really beautiful and fit. So there's a form of fitness in society, which is this sort of synergy between how people move around and, and their, their kind of attitude to life. So, it, yeah, it might be something like that. Well, of course they are, because if there's a rich cultural life in a city, then people want to go and live there. I mean, London has a rich uh, um, sort of cultural life. It, it, it's been enriched over maybe the last uh, six or eight years certainly since I've lived there. Um, and that's created an influx of people who maybe want to be associated with that. Um, that creates a certain sustain sustainability in culture too. Um, I think that's not a bad thing um, in a certain way, but that's certainly not a forever thing. What do you need a bit of mu more communication between people? I mean, You've got an issue, issue of language, so you've got an issue of linguistics. I mean, I'm sure if you're in Stockholm, I would say probably 95 or 90% of the people you meet are Swedish. You come to London, you don't meet anybody English anymore. When you ask for a cup of tea, you say, can I have a cup of tea? 
Well, that's my language, and I sound like I'm a parrot. So the thing is, I'm getting tired of that. I really am. And I, I've got nowhere to go in the world where I can speak my own language anymore. So it's a bit of a mess. So, yeah. You know, the world's in a, in, in a state of flux and migration. So, yeah, I mean, if people stay, stay put in a city, then maybe why not? I, last night, I was at the studio of Michele De Lucchi with some good friends like Alberto Maid and, and some well-known people. What I thought was great was that Michele, it was open house for his studio, and you could look at anything in his studio. So with Alberto, we went to Michele's own private office and looked at everything in his office. I thought that can only be in a city which is a design city where everybody shares everything and that creates a much stronger sort of uh, anatomy. It's all about freedom. So the thing is, maybe through internet traffic and whatever, however we, we do it, there's another way to engage. The problem with that is it becomes metaphysical and you do need a coffee and look in somebody's eyes and that kind of thing. So I think work can be created in a very different uh, social context, a kind of cafe culture if you like. Uh, if that promotes a kind of fluidity between how people work and live, then, then fine. I mean, uh, yeah, I don't like the sort of formality of the fact that you have to go to an office and look like you're working. Why do work people work better on a Sunday? They do more on a Sunday just because they've just got no pressure. They've got no peer pressure or any kind of social pressure. As such. The city of London in the last decade has been the richest it's ever been in its history. Even when we had an empire and absolutely owned a quarter of the world, we, we've made more money in the last decade. How is it that there's not an entrepreneurial exchange between those people in the city who are running hedge funds and everything and people like myself. Nothing new was ever created from, a, from a, a sort of, I don't even mean design, but just the idea of an exchange. So that is a problem, that idea that there's, I think what's happened to date, and that's, this is not new what I'm saying, is that it's been the wealth aggrandizement of individuals. Okay, let's take Milan, okay? Milan is car-ridden and polluted. I have terrible allergies, that's why I've got sunglasses on. I feel awful, my lips are burning, my skin is burnt, my eyes are itching, I, I'm really not feeling very good. And it's partly because of the, the, um, the air pollution that's caused by cars. And uh, Milan is particularly bad. But it erodes the quality of life. The noise and air pollution in cities is something which I've always talked about. If you could, re if you could remove the air and noise pollution out of cities tomorrow, there'd be a vast improvement. You can sleep, you can breathe, it's, it's a good thing. Now, what you could do in a, a city like Milan is you could invest in a democratic car. I, I've designed a thing called a car on a stick, which is like a bubble that's run by GPS and proximity sensors. So nobody owns their own car and then can, has this kind of incredible social context of contest of uh, who looks better, who's got more money than everybody else. I think just clean that one up. The moment you go to a non-polluting vehicle that's super clean, I mean physically clean, and doesn't create any carbon, it means that all the surfaces change. So it means that you could go to Carrara, yeah, Pietra Santa, and you could m mine Calacatta marble, which is white and very beautiful, and you would cover the whole city of Milan in white marble. The marble exists, it's only a question of cutting it. Then you put these clean bubble cars that run around and my solar trees so people can sit underneath and plug in their telephone or plug in their laptop. You get free light at night, people read, reading outside at night. Can you imagine what, that city, what the city would look like? It'd be amazing. And that's possible because money is virtual. We just found that one out. <laughs>